G'day everybody and welcome to another new and exciting edition of Two Clicks Up. Um, if you're a uh, return viewer to the channel, welcome back. And if you're a new, uh, a new viewer or a new subscriber, welcome aboard. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get something out of it. And I hope you hit that subscribe button. Um, what have we got in front of us today? We've got our reborn, rebarreled uh, Howard 1500 in, uh, in 270 Winchester. Started life as a stainless sporter. Um, started to shoot all over the shop, so I've treated it to a new Swan 24-inch fat chrome oily barrel. Um, 1 in 10 twist, pretty standard sort of stuff. Makes the rifle a lot heavier. Had to do a lot of modification in the uh, barrel channel just to get the, uh, the fat profile to fit in the sporter stock. But works a treat. I've been ta it's taking me a while to get a get some shooting done with this. We've been uh, pretty busy around the place with a few uh, few issues and one thing or another. But be that as it may, um, life is uh, life is getting back to some sort of normality, and we can do a bit of shooting now. So I got this out the other day. So we'll uh, flick across to a bit of uh, range footage, then we'll come back and we'll uh, look at the results in the shed. Good day, everybody. Here we are. We're out at the uh, out at the range today. We're doing a bit of load testing for a couple of different rifles. And I brought with me the old uh, reborn, rebarreled, rebirthed, whatever however you want to say it, Hauer 1500 chambered in 270. It's an old stainless 270 I bought on, on the uh, from the second hand market a good while ago and it just started to shoot really erratically. I couldn't work out what was wrong with it. I pulled it apart three or four times. I couldn't make it go, and go any better. So I shouted a new barrel, gave it to uh, Alan Swan down at Red Bank in, uh, in Brisbane. And came back with this nice big fat blued chrome molly 24 inch custom swan barrel these things are good it's a little bit heavier than i wanted it to be but that's what that's what uh, that's quality and uh swan barrels need no introduction we all know what they're like so i've bore sighted this rifle i've got a, a target down at 100 and I'll, all i want to do is just sort of Look, I, I hate this, I loathe to say the word break it in. I'm not a big believer in that, but I'm just going to foul the barrel up and scratch it up a bit and, and all that. Bought a bit of the old uh, PPU, the cheapest shitty ammunition you could buy. It shoots all right. I've shot, I've shot this in the old, two, in the old 270s before, never had an issue with it. And we'll just, we'll just uh, side it in with that and, uh, and see how we go. So what we'll do is we'll just load them one at a time. One of these, these are 100 and... Okay, 130 grain soft points, the standard 270 offering. So, load one at a time. Right, first shot out of the new barrel in the 270. Custom Swan barrel, see how we go. That's yeah, a 270, still boots like a bastard. You know, to say this is... um. Added a bit of weight to this rifle is probably the understatement of the uh, of the year. I had to get right in and clear this uh, uh, clear this barrel channel out because this had a sporter profile. This big fat barrel, you just you couldn't wedge it in there for love or money. And uh, I still may shout there's another stock down the track. So, but we'll see how we go. So I'll have another crack at it. All right. Let's start having a look where we are. I'm not going to bore you watching this rubbish, so we'll uh, see you later on. Righto, the uh, the big 270, she's all uh, sided in as much as I need it for this little load testing little exercise. Um, I'll do the first couple of shots and I'll do the rest off camera. It gets a bit boring after a while, this sort of stuff. But I'm using uh, 130 grain Horn of the SST projectiles. Then I've got 130 grain spear soft point spitzer projectiles, and I'll be testing them with uh, ADI 2209, 2208, and 2206 H because I have had to use that before with uh, with some success. And uh, I've also got some 100 grain spear hollow points which I'm going to test with 2208 and 2206 H. But we'll uh, we'll go through that when we do the uh, do the results back in the uh, in the man cave. So. Um, there's a few old loads that I've used before and a few new tryouts. So we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. So we've got our targets, our three inch targets as normal, set up down at uh, 100 yards. And uh, let's uh, make some noise, shoot some grease with this big girl. Um, it did settle down when sighting the thing, it did dance all over the, uh, 
all over the page for a little bit but uh, we brought it back in and it's sitting about it give or take an inch high at 100 yards so but we'll uh, once we work out a low we'll uh, we'll zero that in properly but uh, here we go 130 grain SSTs uh, ADI 2209 powder load testing through that one straight and very high but that's light hmm. again straight not quite as high might be a little bit early in the barrel life to be getting doing load testing but who knows play the cards you dealt yeah not too bad initial signs aren't too bad Yeah, that's that's not too bad and as i say it might be a little bit early in barrel life at four that's starting to warm right up the problem with the fat barrels they get hot they stay hot for a little bit so this is going to take a while because i let that cool a little bit otherwise you just you don't find anything yet you try and rush so um we'll see you back in the shed right before we go anything any further i'm going to say i'm going to do this uh, video in two parts for the simple reason i did a hell of a lot of testing in one day for this uh for this rifle um, i got it all done in one day and to do it all in one video would make it probably too long and i'd have trouble keeping uh keeping people's interest and attention for the full length of that so i'll break it down into two parts i basically did three different projectiles three different powders and uh four different powder charges for each projectile and however that adds up it adds up for a bloody long video because i can tell you it was a bloody long day shooting but anyway let's get on with it right Brand new barrel. I'm not a big believer in these uh, barrel break-ins and all that sort of crap they go on with. Um, so I, what I do is I just want to scratch them up and foul them up and get the thing shooting straight. I did that with a, a packet of that. Now, I'll trust, tried and true, trusty old PPU two, uh, 270 ammo. It's uh, 130 grain soft point. God knows how fast that, go, that goes. Who cares? Not the breast ammo in the world. The brass is quite all right to reload, though. But... Uh, that's about the cheapest factory ammo you can buy around the place. Right, we're going to use three different powders. We're going to use our uh, all our ADI, 2209, 2208, and 2206H. Um, a lot of people don't really rate the 06H with the bigger the bigger uh, cartridges. It works. It'll work. No, uh, no ifs, buts, or maybes. Right, we're going to push it all with large rifle primers, and at this stage we're using uh, Remington large rifle primers. That's all we can get. That's what's around. You take what you can get. I've uh, loaded it all into brand new Winchester brass. I bought that as brand new unprimed brass. When I got that, I gave it a full length resize, uh, trimmed it to length, deep chamfered, deep bird, ran it through the uh, sonic cleaner, etc., etc. So it's brand new brass. And I'm chucking on part one of this the uh, Hornady SST 130 grain uh, projectiles. Good, good Hornady thing. They are part number 27302, if anyone's interested. Very good projector. Very, very, they, I love the SSTs and use them for a lot of things. Okay. And that's basically them. I can ever get it in my hot little hand. Oh, here it goes. There he is. Try and get in a bit of light. There he is. Um, little ballistic tip, red tip, little beast with a nice little boat tail on him. Cantler. Um, yeah, very good projector. High, very high quality stuff. Starting to get a tad expensive though. That's the downside of it. That's this. Uh, that's the uh, result of the scam damage, I'm afraid. So uh, there we go. We've got all our information from, as usual, Nick Har Nick Harvey's uh, practical reloading manual. That was his eleventh, and I believe his last. I don't think he completed the twelfth one prior to his passing, but I will stand corrected on that. And I always uh, use that in conjunction with the ADI guide. That's 99% of that's online now, so you're pretty uh, you're pretty right for that. I'll do me quick uh, loading uh, reloading disclaimer. So if you are uh, if you wish to hand load ammunition, do so safely. Learn m as much as you possibly can about it before you uh, before you start the process. It is a dangerous process, and you getting it wrong can have very very dire results. I strongly recommend you load only what is recommended into your rifle walk slowly up walk slowly up the uh up the ladder to for uh, 
uh, for loading, te load testing, as soon as you see any pressure signs, stop immediately. What I load works for me and in my firearms only and may or may not necessarily work for you or in your firearms. Load within, always load within safe recommended parameters. If you want to load these things up and make absolute rocket chips and firecrackers out of them and blow your brains out, that's on you, not me. Righto. Rightio, let's have, uh, have a bit of a look at how we went now. We, uh, we started with our standard three inch targets at 100 yards. Move him up a bit so we can see. Okay, what are we on? We're on our ADI 2209 powder. We've got a 130 grain Hornady SST projectiles. Okay, it took us 11 shots to sight that rifle in to a point where I was happy enough to start shooting some groups with it. But now this is the order in which they were shot. And in theory, it's supposed to be as it goes along and it sort of scratches up and fouls up a bit. It's supposed to get a little bit better. But we'll see how we go. Right, first cab off the rank, 1.39 inches and that's a four shot group god knows why i can't even remember why i loaded four there but be that as it may now these are old loads i used to use so there's also a bit of a tried and true experience with some of these different loads that i've used 53 and a half so we've gone up in half grain increments and that's a one point what is that 1.564 inches call out a fly call out me i don't care there's two, that's, that's two next to each other. So anything you can do that, I'm happy with that. That's, that's likely going to be me. That is likely going to be me. And I'm happy to take the, take the credit, if that's the right word for that. The credit or the blame, whichever you want to call it. 54, we've gone up um, another half, another half a grain. Still not foul, still not foul. And um, under MOA, so that's 0 0.927. And we've gone up to 54 and a half. The maximum listed for 2209 is uh, we've got a two and a bit inch group there, so we don't worry about that. So that um, 53.5, that he's the winner thus far. So we'll uh, we'll go to the next lot. There we go. Right, we're at 228, 2208 at 100 yards with the 130 horn of these. Now that's 1.88 for again a four shot group. But two little closies there and two little closies there. Yeah, you know, that could that could be anything. That could be anything. But uh, 2208, he, he's a really good general purpose powder. That's, that's the Hogden Varget is 2208. So there we go. He, he's a very good general purpose powder. He, oh, we, he, he can work in a lot of different colours from right up to the little stuff to right up to the big stuff. So, he's, so we'll, we'll come back to that. 45 grains, other half a grain up. We've got 1.416, but we've got those two on top of each other. So again, I'll take the credit or blame for that. 45 and a half. 0 0.712 as they fell. That's still not foul. That's not foul. That's with the 2208. I don't care where these things drop, as long as they're dropping together. I, I sided them in with that PPU and got them close. And as long as they're dropping somewhere together, you fix that. You just wind scopes around. That's, that's easy. 46 grains. Up another half a grain. He's the maximum uh, listed for 2208. What have we got there? 1.08. So just a dot over MO, MOA. And even these things, even though they're a little bit wide, they're, they're consistent. They're not all over the park like that. So, look, you, that's workable. That's, I would, probably wouldn't go to that, but I'd probably go to that one. If anything out of that but even what the first that one that one that one and that one i'd probably even look at that i'd probably even probably look at 45 there i'd look at 45 because that that's close those those flies are that's a 90 percent chance that's going to be me because the, the operator can be a bit of a loose unit that's for sure right the 130 grain uh sst's with the 2206 right First shot's a four, first group's a four shot. He's a bit over an inch and a half. A couple of closies there, but oh yeah, whatever. You go over to 44 grains. Look at that. Barely half inch group, 0.566. Nothing wrong with that. You live with that. You can live with that. So it, it, it's not overly necessary to put these, this 2209, these big booming powders in with these, with these, um, uh, with these bigger bullets, these bigger cartridges. 2208 
works fine in 3006. 2206H will work in 3006 too. But make no mistake, you'll get argued about that all day, all day long. But it does, trust me, it does. So, but that one, we're at 44 grains for a 0.566. We got the 44 and a half. Now we one and three quarters as it's fallen. Those two, again, that's going to be me. You know, loosen up behind the butt. That, that, that's me. You know, that, me not doing my job. You, you know, if you put your head down, that's what you get. And nine times out of ten, these are the third shot. So that's me getting tired, me not looking, whatever. So you'd look at that. And over this side, it's, we've gone a bit over an inch and a half, 45 grains, uh, max L low for 2206. Just blows it out a little bit too much. So there we go. That's your, um, that's your uh, 130 grain Hornet is done and dusted. So I want to have a look at one more thing before we go. Right, at the very end of the day, and uh, very end of the day on uh, rifle test day the other day, it had been a big day. I'd been buggerized. It had taken me about three, a bit over three hours to do all this, getting belted around by a 270, even though I will say that heavy barrel has mitigated that uh, the recoil of that rifle quite substantially. It's still a big heavy rifle to lug around. There's still a big booming cartridge. I fired 124 rounds that day out of that thing on the trot, and it does knock you around a bit. I'm a broken down old man, not afraid to say it, be that as it may. As I stated, I sighted the rifle in with this PPU stuff. It took me 11 shots to sight it in um, to a point where I was happy enough to do some groups with it. So it gives me nine left. So I don't, I don't want them, so I'm just going to shoot them off so I can have the brass. So I put three little targets up, three groups, five minutes between each group. Barely cool it down. Okay, first three, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, whatever. Second three, yeah, not bad. Okay, last three shots of the day, number 122, 123, and 124. Here they are. That's three right there. That is one, 0 0.188 of an inch. Now, I don't know whether I got the only three PPU 270 rounds that were loaded, anything like consistent for the in that batch, who knows? Or I just made enough corresponding errors where it all they all sat on top of each other. That is three. That is three in that little raggedy looking hole. It only looks like two, it is three. And uh, 0 0.188, so I'm happy enough with that, but it's a factory, it's a shitty factory ammo group, so, but that's, an indication of what these swan barrels will do. So if you're looking at a rebarrel for a rifle, very hard to go past a swan barrel located in Brisbane. So I'm gonna put this one to bed. Right, um, part one of load testing, load development for the uh, rebarrel 270, that's, uh, that's done and dusted. Um, found a few things yet about that. They'd uh, got a couple of good loads we can, good starting loads we can uh, do with that. We've Shows exactly what these swan barrels can do. These are a quality, quality item. There's no, there's no other way to, uh, no other way to put it. They're a very, very, extremely high quality item. These barrels are shipped all over the world. Competitions at every relative, uh, every relevant um, uh, class are won internationally using swan barrels, and you just, you can't fault them. You cannot fault them. You cannot fault the workmanship. Great family business. Go and see them. If you've got a rifle that's sort of all of a sudden it doesn't want to shoot anymore, don't throw it away. Don't um, don't try and flog it on the second-hand market because you get nothing for them. No one give you anything. If you like the rifle that was a shooter at one stage and it just goes bad, go rebarrel it. Rebarrel it because it's going to cost you that to buy a new rifle anyway and go through all the you're still going to go through all the, the rhubarb of bloody load testing and load development and all that. So you might as well buy rebarrel something you want with something that you know is good and is going to last you. So anyway, that's my rant. I'm done. Um, hope you liked the video. Hope you like, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. I enjoyed making it. Um, if you'd like to uh, subscribe to the channel, please do so. Bang that bell icon like it owes your money so you get all the notifications of any upcoming videos. And there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be a few in the, uh, the next few weeks. I've got a pile of um, load testing I've done and it's all been sitting there. I just haven't had time to put anything on. I've been that busy. But it's all coming. So uh, hang tight, plenty to come. So in closing, as I always say, tell your wife, tell your girlfriend. You can tell them both. Doesn't matter to me. You just have two clicks up. Ta-da.